Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. The Small Firms Association recently published a document which sets out their recommendations for making Ireland a better environment for small firms. Joining me now to discuss this publication in more detail is Linda Barry, Assistant Director with the Small Firms Association. Firstly, Linda, remind us about the work which is undertaken by your organisation. So the Small Firms Association is a representative body representing small companies around Ireland. So that's companies with less than 50 employees. So our community is made up of about 8,500 small companies. And for those companies, we provide them with advice to try and make them a better business. So in terms of HR and employment law advice, in terms of their terms and conditions of trade, finance, training, uh, all of those areas. We also voice the needs of small business at national level, both directly directly to government and in the media. And the other thing that we do is really try and link up these small businesses into a community through our networking events, our National Small Business Awards program and all the other initiatives where we come together throughout the year. So from your own insight in the SFA, what are the key needs of the SME community in Ireland today? So... We see a variety of needs. One of the things that's really at the top of the SFA agenda is in terms of the way um, small businesses, and in particular the the owner-managers, are taxed. We see real discrimination in the tax system between the way employees are treated and the way owner-managers who have taken a risk to go out, set up their business, and create jobs the way they're treated. So, for example, we were happy to see the introduction of a small income tax credit for um, uh, owner managers in last year's budget, but we want to see that you know rapidly increase to bring it at least into line with the PAYE tax credit. Small firm owner managers are also subject to a USC surcharge if they're owning over uh, earning over a hundred thousand euro, and they have no safety net if their business fails or they fall ill. So that's a huge area that we're looking at. Other things, the key needs of small business are around access to public contracts. So we see increasing centralization of how governments procure goods and services. Really, that's locking small companies out of the market and and threatening jobs in the process. So they're two of the big things. The government announced today that a self-employed person goes out of business, that they would be in a position to be able to claim social welfare benefits. Would that offset the higher rate of tax that they would have to pay and also that surcharge that's there in relation to USC? So the three issues are linked really, but on the safety net, what we're really calling for is a voluntary system, uh, a voluntary PRSI system for the self-employed, which means that they could sign up to this system, bear the the cost of that uh, on an ongoing basis, but then benefit from the the illness benefit and unemployment benefit if things don't go well for them. Now we're hearing lots about economic recovery, but I'm wondering from your perspective, are SMEs feeling it, firstly right across the country, and secondly, at the same pace as larger companies are? We conducted a survey of our members um, at the beginning of May, and really we see the majority feel that the economic environment is improving. Now, I'd have to attach on to that um, a kind of word of caution that it's really this recovery is being felt very unequally across the economy and we have plenty of members telling us that either in their sector or in their part of the country that the recovery is not a reality. Um, So I think we need to be conscious of that in all of our language around business and in around around the story of what's happening in our country uh, and make sure that we are conscious of those uh, companies who risk being left behind. So from that research that you completed, what sectors seem to be doing well? So a lot of the, you know, the high tech sectors are doing well, um, but then we see sectors really, you know, the a lot of traditional sectors and sectors like retail that are still struggling. And we've seen, you know, there's some uh, recovery in the volume of retail sales, but we see the value is still lagging. So that means that you know, the the margins for those retail businesses are really minuscule um, and they're they're kind of teetering on the edge of survival. 
Now, the reason I've asked you to join me on this morning's show, Linda, is to discuss a new publication that has just been brought out by the SFA entitled Next Generation Business, a vision for small firms in Ireland. What was the thinking behind this document? So the thinking behind it really was while we're you know, extremely active day to day on advocating for the things that need to change to improve the environment for small businesses. We really wanted to take an opportunity to step back and to look at really the big picture and to try and see if we're going to take small business in Ireland to the next level over the next five to ten years, what are the issues that we need to tackle? Now, if you've just tuned in, I'm speaking to Linda Barry from the Small Firms Association. Linda, there are three themes to the vision for small firms in Ireland publication, and we will look at each of these in turn. We will start with fostering a strong inclusive culture and positive recognition for small businesses. Is this really a problem out there today? Well, there's a perception amongst many small businesses that the way they're viewed is that if they succeed, they're a gangster, and if they fail, they're chancers. So it's lose-lose in their view. Now, we'd have to admit that the kind of perception of entrepreneurship and of small business has improved in recent years. And things like Dragon's Den um, can really can really add to that and can really make create a positive perception of small businesses amongst the public at large at large. But we still feel that there are things that need to be tackled. So our members tell us that sometimes they don't feel like they're in the right sector or that they have the right ambitions, that everything seems to be about high-tech, fast-growing companies. And many of our businesses are traditional, established companies, and they don't necessarily want to be the next big thing, but they want to run a solid business. They want to keep on their employees feed into their local economy and continue to do that and they feel that they should be recognised and supported. So what actions do you think can be taken to facilitate positive recognition for small businesses? Yeah, so some of them are quite concrete in terms of, you know, in the business failure area, we'd like the government to set up an early warning system that would, such as uh, exists in Denmark and other countries and there, you know, if a business is considered to be at risk of failure, it's flagged in the public system and supports are available to them to try and get the business back on track. But we also have recommendations that are just about thinking about how we see businesses and in particular about how we talk about them. And we've said that, you know, politicians and the media in particular need need to be very conscious of how they talk about small business, entrepreneurship, profit and those business failures where there's no um where there's no illegality involved and just be conscious to create positive language and respect to speak respectfully about those situations. Now, Linda, moving on to the second theme of your publication, focused on creating a highly educated and skilled population with the ethos and tools to succeed. In order to achieve this objective, will it be necessary to promote increased collaboration between the business community and the entire education system? I think that would be a great outcome if there was increased collaboration between businesses and schools, between representative bodies of of business and representatives of teachers and education institutions. And this is something we want to see this collaboration going right through from primary into secondary education, then into tertiary, higher, further education and through the lifelong learning piece. And it's not necessarily about having entrepreneurship or even business studies, you know, pushed out to more students as a specific subject. But it's about really thinking about those skills that are needed, either to set up a business or to work in a small business. Tools like critical thinking, creativity, resilience, assessment of risk, these should be running through our entire education system. And really, when you think about those skills, it certainly can't do any harm to strengthen these in our young people coming up through the education system. Now, Linda, the third theme in your publication is building a 
dynamic and supportive environment for small businesses. Now, there are a myriad of supports available to startups and SME companies here in Ireland through the local development companies, Enterprise Ireland, the local enterprise office, Board BIA, Falcha Ireland and everything else. Do you feel that they're effective of these businesses? For those businesses that successfully access them, they're a huge support and they're, they can be hugely valuable and really they can make a difference, um, that make the difference between survival and failure in some of those companies. But we like to see, we feel that the supports and are largely focused on picking a handful of winners at the moment and that's the government approach and that's been relatively successful in getting us to the economy that we have today but we feel a shift in thinking is now needed and rather than focusing on specific companies and really you know giving giving quite good supports but to a small minority of companies we are saying we need to focus on the big cross-cutting issues that can create a better business environment for all companies and create a swell of activity in this area. So broadband is a huge thing that we point to here. Um, it's, a, it's a big barrier, lack of access to broadband for companies in many parts of the country and not just in rural areas. Lots of urban areas as well seem to be black holes for broadband. So that's something that investment in that area could... R- uh, rise or lift all boats in terms of the small business community. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.